صباح الخير جميعا مرحبا بكم في هاي السيشن نمبر جود مورنينج ايفري وان ذس از ذا سكند سيشن اوف اريجا اباوت ذا تيشينج اوف انفستيجيتيف جورناليزم ان يونيفرستيز از يو اول نو تيشينج انفستيجيتيف جورناليزم تو فور مي تيشينج ان ات سيلف از هاز لوتس اوف تشالنجز اند وي نو ذات انفستيجيتيف جورناليزم از كونسيدرد سم هاو ريسنت اتس نيو ان اور يونيفرستيز as a course uh, so uh, the G, uh, the uh, z generation has uh, was born after this uh, technological uh, outbreak uh, the, the new technologies and using uh, social media is something very practical and and we know that uh, this will uh, lay on the burden of uh, journalism and the trainers of investigative journalism in the universities many challenges in um and conveying a message in uh, inciting uh, those uh, students in teaching them new methods of research of uh, uh, searching for um, uh, facts and investigative journalism can also represent an opportunity for them in order to go into the market i'm very happy to have with us today uh, four of the best expertise uh, in uh, uh, investigative uh, journalism. Uh, and before we start in uh, asking you or presenting our questions to you, I will uh, introduce you. Ms. We have uh, Dr. Sahar Khalifa, uh, a professor in uh, journalism in the in media uh, faculty in Iraq. And um, our next uh, panelist is Ms. Khadija uh, Aulad Ali. She's a producer and a media uh, inter and and uh, trainer. Ms. Mark Hunter is a profession and trainer in investigative journalism, and Ms. Nahida Hatma. And and. And, uh, and and she is an instructor at Al Yarmouk University in the Faculty of Journalism. Um, my first question is regarding challenges. Challenges, and and to each of you, what are the challenges that you encounter nowadays when teaching investigative journalism or training investigative journalism in universities for the new generation? I will start with Ms. Sahar. Thank you very much, Hanan. I'm very happy to be with you today with uh, the, this uh, distinguished panelist. Uh, in order to be able to deal well and handle this generation well, we need to learn more about them. I believe that this generation has contributed a lot in changing our uh, communities. It's uh, uh, the one that's exposed to open sources that, that uh, deals a lot with technology. And that's and for me, I can say that how can we enhance our performance as uh, instructors, as teachers, and uh, professional uh, professionals in uh, to uh, have have an influence on them so that they listen to us, we attract their attention so that they learn from our uh, experience. The first thing that I would uh, uh, like to suggest and say is that how can we change the uh, uh, means of teaching uh, of uh, uh, journalism, especially in investigative journalism? And here I would like to stress that we need to make a change. Uh, the uh, current uh, method used uh, is in giving attention uh, for a theory uh, on the account of uh, uh, applicable uh, or applied uh, method is no more uh, uh, feasible. We need to work in parallel that uh, the practice should be more given attention than theory. Uh, this will enhance their uh, skills, that will help them in, in entering the labor market. At the same time, we can maybe adopt new uh, uh, active strategy, uh, learning strategies, uh, and uh, this is ad uh, adopted in many uh, specialties. It's not about just learning and memorizing. It uh, depends on collective work, on analysis. It uh, uh, incites them to look, to work, uh, to depend on themselves in order to acquire information. So a, a journalist, a prof, a professor, regarding 
regardless of their effic um, their knowledge, their skills, they won't be able to learn everything or to to follow up with the uh, updates. Uh, and then they need to uh, and the teach the students have uh, to play a role in in helping themselves in assisting themselves to acquire uh, these skills. This will lead us to. Uh, and I would like here to confirm uh, an important point that uh, in, in when teaching investigative journalism, we need a lab spe spe specified uh, for this topic. This lab should uh, be well equipped with the needed tools that uh, teaching investigative journalism uh, require. I would like also to refer to an important point, which is the curriculum, the curriculum of investigative journalism uh, universities that teach uh, such a curriculum to update it, uh, not only to uh, every year uh, keep uh, teaching the same curriculum, things change uh, that were developed rapidly. Also fact checking. Fact checking is a very important and complementary topic in, in investigative journalism, which will uh, uh, facilitate their work. There are other tools, the tools that use the right equipment uh, that related to AI and uh, which is related to uh, investigation investigative work. Yesterday, yesterday I was uh, very happy to listen to Rawan when he talked about the curriculum of Arish uh, uh, curriculum in, that will be adopted in universities. This is something uh, uh, that was a uh, uh, happy news uh, because this will help us in universities and, and instructors in universities to develop, to further develop and enhance and advance the curriculum. These are the main points that I think are uh, good in helping us our you know, uh, uh, as instructors and teachers in universities thank you very much miss uh, khadija uh, miss sahar uh, uh, teaching methods that has been updated uh, in practically and you uh, at the beginning you produce programs uh, you are working in media and a trainer how do you find it's uh, very important to to teach that for investigative journalists that we should be re rehabilitate the journalists uh, so that the student can enter the labor work labor market uh, thank you i'm very happy to be here with you to share experiences when we talk about academia uh, directly you have to think of uh, the history and schools and so many intensive uh, information a student graduates as a device in a, a library a mobile library of information uh, in addition to some practicalities but the current generation they are born in their house they are uh, moving within the platforms of production and creating of contact they produce uh, they do everything in creating the wrong and they broadcast themselves and so that this young people uh, since his early age became a, a production for a platform for production uh, over the time this created the gap between the outcome of the uh, original uh, academic teaching that teaches the rules of journalism and the train the uh, ethical standards and train the journalists how to be a servant for the general interests uh, the new generation they they took it very easy so that they have a high confidence in themselves they think that they are become actually journalists and they can uh, overcome those traditional journalists and the old ones that are depending uh, on the old system or the traditional system in teaching and to journalism. I think in this era, we need to work on two levels. We need to work uh, on the old academia that we bring into this new reality because before we can be academia, we are fathers and parents and sons of this community and we can uh, actually uh, know about this difference between us and the new generation about journalism and all uh, general areas. We have to also work on working those young journalists to our world, how to be a, 
to be a journalist, you have to learn and go through all these things to become a professional. The other problem is this creating so many uh, discrimination between two parties that that some of sometimes we have uh, invalid platforms that create uh, bad content that is not uh, good or valid for the academia journalists. That's why there's a huge uh, responsibility on the, uh, the academia person to think of how to uh, to bridge the gap between the universities and academia and the uh, reality of journalism today within the era of the uh, so many uh, terms uh, about the the uh, citizen journalists that everybody thinking that they are a journalist and they can uh, create uh, content so that that will be disasters between uh, people who do, who don't know what is the actual uh, traditional of speech should be my opinion I think we should. Uh, get the two generations to be merged together. There has to be communicated. And as according uh, to doctor, uh, they have to uh, update the curriculum and update the methods of teaching. Previously, the teacher was the only source of information. I can give to the student and then he gets an exam. But now the teacher uh, is only a facilitator for education. That's why. Uh, we, we should give them more freedom during teaching. We give them the space for our students so that we can have the biggest feedback that uh, that can build up actual knowledge and help the teacher to give the to give the needs of the students who come from different reality. We also have to support these students because because they are as our. Uh, sons and daughters they have to be uh, servants uh, you are you are serving us uh, you cannot be uh, uh, if, if you are taking your son to a doctor you cannot give him to a, a, an amateur that's why you shouldn't take the rules of journalism uh, lightly this is a, a very important occupation very honorable occupation and it's highly impact on general opinion and other generations Accordingly, to keep long things short, we need to uh, bridge the gap between the two generations in, in order to reach to uh, actual declarance that overcomes the problems of the, the past and prevent problems from the future. Mark. You prepared the curriculum, uh, a rich curriculum for investigative journalism that we are depending on. We are all depending on the Arabic uh, world to teach investigative journalists and to train the journalists for investigative uh, journalism. Do you think today, uh, do you think this curriculum has to be uh, updated to answer to the requirements of the generations? What are the challenges? that are presented today uh, for the university professors uh, that uh, professors that teach in this case of journalists what can what should we change wow that's a large question <laughs> okay. of course of course we need of course we need to update because the uh, the environment around us has changed as as my distinguished colleagues pointed out you know uh, I mean, I can see this in my students. They're better with technology than I am. They teach me technology. I don't teach them technology. On the other hand, there are some things that haven't changed, okay? The curriculum of Arage is based on a method that did not exist before 2009, okay? That method was commissioned by Arage, okay? It's since become a global method. This is a place where the Arab world led the entire world. It's the first time that happened in the history of investigative journalism. So, you know, by now the precepts that we put forward in that first manual story-based inquiry or the Arab method, you know, have become generalized. Everyone is using them. It's the basis. Do we need to update it? Yes, in a number of ways. And not the basic methods of inquiry, okay? But to take into account a number of things 
that come into place around it. One, of course, is the technological change. And for that, we need coalition with people who are experts in those domains. I'm never going to be an expert in open source intelligence to the same extent as the people at Bellingcat. Okay, I can teach them. I have taught them how to do uh, a number of different things, but I'm, I'm not going to be as good at geolocation as they are. I'm not going to be as expert at going through uh, social media accounts to glean information. These are places where they can help. But there are a couple of other things that we can do in the meanwhile. Okay, one is that we have to make our students aware that investigative journalism is not going to be a break, like you put on the brakes in a car. It's not going to make them unemployable. It's going to make them employable for the rest of their lives. They're going to learn skills that translate into scholarly research, into uh, inside intelligence for industries, into any number of spheres besides the news industry. We have to face the fact, okay, that in many places, including France, where I've lived for 40 years, the structure of the media industry is now dominated by oligarchs, okay, who are not particularly eager to see us investigating their activities. So the movement in the industry, the movement in investigation in particular, is happening around the edges of the media industry. It's happening through independent groups. Okay, uh, Inky Fada in Tunisia was a great example. Okay, it, it's happening uh, in communities. Bellingcat emerged from and created an open source intelligence community that is now global. Um, it's happening in media that serve communities of practice and interest. Okay, uh, Greenpeace is the classic example. Okay, I've worked with Greenpeace. I did investigations with Greenpeace. They were a lot better to work with than some of the mainstream media that I've worked with. They understood exactly what was going on. And they understood what we were doing as well. We didn't have to explain to them every day. So, you know, our students are going to be highly desirable resources for NGO communities, for, you know, people who have need of actionable information rather than, uh, you know, the ability to amass a crowd of idiots like the counterfactual community, as uh, Elliot Higgins of Bellingcat calls them. We need to you help our students build those communities to show them basic techniques of marketing and branding to get their work out there, to make connections to the people who share their values and who are willing to support them. And we need to, uh, Beyond, beyond that aspect of opportunity of showing them that, you know, yes, you have, a, you have a rich, fulfilling life, we need to bring them into the community where investigative methods are prized, where people care about the same things. And I will say one other thing, okay? Like everyone on this stage, I'm sure that I think that facts matter more than illusions. I think that it's very important to know what you're talking about because if you try to build solutions based on illusions, the result is usually tragic. Okay, and we're watching a, a repeat of that phenomenon on a global scale now. Um, but another part of our mission is changing. The core of our work is no longer about objectivity, it's about transparency. I believe this very strongly and we haven't worked out the implications yet. And this is one place where we can contribute on a theoretical level. The, the second aspect is that it, when I look at what's happening to the audiences for media worldwide, I see a decline in the audience of mainstream media 
and a rise in the fragmentation of media sources. And that means that our job is, is no longer saying we're for everyone. Our job is for the people who need us, and those people need us to protect them, notably from lies, to promote the values that they live by and that we share to join that community of values. And the third point is to prevail because we're in a fight. Okay, we're fighting for a lot of things right now. We have to win this fight. Thank you, Mark. Mark, uh, it's about uh, uh, technology, uh, of new technology, and how can we uh, uh, teach uh, such uh, issues in, in universities in, so that the, the students would use it in investigative journalism also uh, within the university and after they finish university. What are the means, the tools that you use when you teach uh, this topic at the University of Yermo? Thank you very much. At the beginning, uh, as 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 you heard uh, uh, from our colleagues and from Mark, there are many challenges and many focus on the curriculum, many focus on uh, the non-existence of uh, labs, of uh, uh, networking methodologies. I will focus on something different, which is to keep uh, in line with the, the technology. There are techniques that we use in order to make sure we are updated. There is uh, this concern in universities from using, for instance, tools for of AI tools that are used in uh, in uh, media uh, uh, material and they are many uh, and and they're used in many aspects but we pro professors of media we always have our own concerns however there is the, the statement that I love whoever do not uh, de develop will be out of the sphere that's what we try to do with our students in order to use the most updated techniques at the same time um, and employ AI in investigating journalism in investigative journalism they can use uh, some tools to search for some ideas to search for information and for resources analyze data uh, metadata in uh, uh, quickly and and accurately the, some tools that I will refer to shortly the, also to discover some uh, trends for uh, information and data and, and and we can maybe uh, create some connections uh, that we as humans that would be uh, absent to us or wouldn't be clear to us. And we can look for them also to disseminate the content, as Khadija has said. But uh, there are some challenges that we encounter in uh, universities to use uh, AI uh, tools, uh, such as lack of financial resources. For instance, there are some applications that, need, that are paid applications in order to use them like uh, uh, some some uh, 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 i will refer to this later on some of these. Also, there should be a training for uh, uh, professors as well as students to use these uh, tools before uh, we uh, announce them to the world and use them in our curriculum as a, a rich curriculum that will be used in the near future or that we propose that some of its tools, the technical tools be used at the same time. Uh, this will help, uh, such tools will help in regulating and facilitating access to uh, uh, information uh, to uh, results. However, I would like to refer to uh, something among the ch challenges that we encounter in order to enter such uh, tools to our curriculum is the ethical uh, uh, aspect. A uh, student will start to adopt and use only this uh, these tools and will uh, be uh, short of being creative or being distinguished in um, extracting uh, the um, uh, relations between these different variables. I can refer to some of the tools that can be used um, in translation, uh, like uh, in translation, there are many tools used, uh, like uh, Bard, Depot, Copy AI, 
and uh, many investigative uh, uh, reports uh, that are being done on, it, on international uh, ideas or so so uh, some documents need to be translated some data needs to be translated so in minutes or even in seconds they can uh, use some of these uh, ai applications in order to translate these documents so these are supportive tools we need to steer these students to positively use some of the techniques and digital tools. Thank you very much. Uh, there's another question that I need everybody answer me uh, in one minute uh, so that we can give uh, time for a QA and a or maybe from followers, uh, followers on Zoom. My question is, is it possible uh, that uh, investigative journalism that can provide for uh, the students when they graduate, uh, can they find a job opportunity easily? Is it possible? that the student of investigative journalists journalist can find a job opportunity and stand up, uh, stand up from other students. Uh, one minute each, please be precise, so that we can uh, give more time. Uh, to summarize this, let's be realistic. As universities, we cannot uh, have students graduated uh, and work directly in uh, investigative journalism. Uh, this work needs experience and practice and long time of learning. Uh, it wouldn't be uh, given in only uh, in one stage, maybe for 30 weeks, and he could be a good uh, investigative journalist. He can practice. He can practice uh, maybe uh, other types of uh, journalism, uh, traditional journalism, and then he can work on himself, develop his skills. Uh, there are other uh, foundations that I can be trained and learned from, and this world is filled with uh, so many ports for learning, not only the university. University is the first step of learning. They, are, they should take more than uh, one step to uh, follow. Ms. Khadija, rapidly, please. Uh, uh, in order to graduate from university, you have to be succeed and to be employed. Uh, they would ask you, what are your accomplishments? What are uh, the things that you did? In other language, our still universities, uh, Arabic university, they don't qualify students to be work at once. That's why I have two suggestions. The first is to either have the uh, Universities have workshops or labs uh, specialized uh, with the stimulation for uh, employment uh, establishments in, uh, in journalism, all types of journalism. That's why they provide this environment for the students to be trained. Uh, they will take the craft. Uh, these need skills. Uh, they're in scientific skills. Uh, they have to develop their innovation and imagination, especially when we're talking about investigative journalism in TV. The other choice is to have the universities uh, research the incubators for training, uh, whether in uh, satellite channels, uh, Arabic or international, to provide this environment for the uh, students, this environment to uh, merge both practical and theoretical studies so that he can be qualified to have this third step on the ladder of production, uh, journal, uh, investigative journalist, and so that he would be actually uh, uh, outstanding in that regard. One minute. Well, we need to be honest about this, okay? In Europe, uh, half of journalism graduates, one half across the continent, do not get a job in the first year after they graduate. We can't promise our students a job in that way. So what can we promise them? Well, we can say to them, we can make contacts with people outside the news industry, since the news industry is still declining. We can make contacts with people outside the, the news industry, in NGOs, in other academic institutions. If we focus on finding jobs that enable students to develop their research and analysis skills, this is the core of investigative work. You got to find the information, you got to know what you're looking for, and you have to uh, be able to understand the meaning of the information that you're finding. So, in investigative journalism over the last 20 years, the growth in the practice did not come from the mainstream industry. 
It came from independent groups working outside the industry who created a space where people could uh, show and develop their skills. And then, you know, the best of that generation was co-opted into the mainstream media. I think, this is, I think this is the path forward. I'll also say that I taught a class uh, at Aix-Marseille in France a year ago. I only had five students who cared to do the work. Okay, the others were thinking, oh, lie, this will make me non-hireable. Okay, but those five were terrific. And one of them was so brilliant that I hired her myself. Right, thank you. Yeah. دقيق. <تصفيق> أوكي. بصراحة أنا كل فخر إنه في مجموعة من طلاب جامعة اليرموك موجودين معانا هون. هلا نحن دورنا كأساد بيجي بثلاث شغلات. أول إشي التدريس من ناحية الصحافة الاستقصائية من درس. بس برضو كمان نحن دورنا إنه نشبك طلابنا مع المؤسسات اللي بتشتغل على التدريب. وتفعيل المهارات والأدوات لصحافة الاستقصائية لنواكبهم مع سوق العمل هذا الشيء طبعا أنا بعمله مع طلابي وبحب أنه أوجههم فور اكزامبل لشبكة أريج اللي دائما بتواكب التكنولوجيا الحديثة والمهارات اللي بتلزمنا لسوق العمل تمام شكرا لك رح نفتح المجال للقاعة لو في أسئلة وكمان من <تصفيق> I will have another question so that all of you can you answer these questions. Good morning. Sahara. <laughs> My name is Khaloud Al Amari, uh, head of uh, head of uh, uh, editor of uh, Iraq uh, Media. Uh, and I am having this website to train uh, media students in Iraq. Uh, we've been training for three years now, uh, voluntarily. And I would like to talk with uh, Dr. Sahar to uh, nominate some students. Uh, I think everybody, uh, uh, no college in Iraq can graduate. So I ask uh, Dr. Sahar, how wouldn't you in your uh, media college uh, have a uh, summer training for your students and uh, open networking with the um, Iraqi media network so that when the student uh, have a three month summer uh, three months for in summer they can be trained a practical trained so that when they graduate uh, four years later they are practically tra trained and some of them they can work before even they are graduated Mark do you have a question? Or you want to uh, to answer? I, I I don't have a question, but but I would like to say that in most universities, investigative journalism is treated like the cherry on the cake. You get one semester to study it, and that is not enough time, frankly, to learn the methods and to apply them. I mean, there's a consensus here that practice matters. Okay, and. You know, this is a fight within university faculties to get more space to do the work, okay? And I personally decided that I wasn't going to teach anymore in a place that would only give me one term to work with the students because it's not enough to give them the basis of the practice and then to put them on a project where they can do it. You know, so this is a fight we have within faculties. It's not over. Okay, thank you. Mr. Sahar, have you uh, Ms. Sahar, would you like to answer? Uh, these are... Uh, two important questions. The first question is about the time. In my university, uh, we give uh, 30 weeks of, uh, uh, of teaching. I think this is enough to teach the basics and tools of uh, 
and skills and investigative uh, journalism. We can uh, give them expertise, uh, previous expertise, experiences of investigative. Uh, we can ask them for uh, some uh, practical jobs that we can measure the, uh, their understanding for material that we gave them. I'm not aware if uh, other universities give this time or less. I think uh, other universities that give less time, they should prioritize uh, this matter and give it on tone terms rather than only one. Uh, this is about the first question. Uh, of course, I emphasize that we cannot graduate as a investigative journalist ready to work. Uh, you have to, uh, after graduation, you have to work and develop yourself and work a lot. According to the uh, second questions, uh, Ms. Khaloud, you know the reality of universities in Iraq. I really wish I agree on your suggestions and I work uh, in all means to have uh, summer uh, training to our students. The problem is permissions. We need the student to be rest in the uh, holiday, summer holiday. Is it a wrong policy? I'm, I don't know. This is within the higher education policies. I agree. I agree with your suggestions, and I wish that we can do that. We are trying. You can see that our attempts, not only during uh, summer holiday, but during the uh, classrooms, we can uh, have our students uh, uh, involved in each training printry that we can get. There is another question uh, that comes from online because they are following in Zoom. Samah is uh, asking, uh, can we see the question on the screen, please? Samah is. Uh, we can hear you, Samah. Please ask your question. At the beginning, I am grateful for this content. I think it's a great opportunity for us to learn and benefit uh, about uh, investigative journalism. This is the beginning with. And second, until now, I haven't practiced uh, journalism practically. Uh, my study was uh, economy science, but my question is if I want to uh, train about uh, investigative uh, journalism and combine it with the practical uh, practice, uh, what is the actual steps that I should take? I will uh, let, please every, each one of you uh, answer in 30 seconds. Uh, we can keep up with the new uh, uh, things about investigative uh, for skills and tools. Currently, now it's the era of skills and tools. You have to uh, have the knowledge and learn these tools. Uh, on your own. Uh, in, all, uh, in addition to learning uh, workshops and courses that are available online. Listen, as a specialist in economic science, you bring an incredible resource to any investigative group. Most journalists are people who wanted to be novelists. Mm -hmm. The fact that you have paid serious attention to the economy makes you a great prospect for investigative work because investigative work is above all about following the money. Thirty seconds. <laughs> I think the best way, uh, because all journalists, they some of them, they don't read and they don't see each other, uh, because they have to watch and watch and and see what's been accumulated in this uh, field. The next is science, because science uh, is uh, goes way ahead of technology. And of course, you have to practice on uh, skills. I worked on producing uh, films by other colleagues. And I think observe supervision or working under a specialized supervisor is an open university to teach you a lot of skills. And you can also uh, determine what you need of uh, uh, to learn, uh, to learn at the same time. I uh, second on what's been uh, said previously, and I can add only one thing. Uh, if, if you want to learn, the world is your limit, the sky is your limit. Uh, you can read or you can uh, see previous journalist materials or current 
uh, you can go to YouTube. There's a lot of uh, training in YouTube. The other institutions, it's available. If you can learn, you have an open path for you. Uh, it's way better than our time. We suffered a lot. We didn't learn uh, that easily. This is what I have to emphasize. Thank you all. I've been so happy that I've been with my guests. Uh, we don't have another time. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, the opening ceremony will be open. I'm grateful for our attendees, whether in person or in via Zoom. Of course, uh, we will communicate about teaching uh, investigative journalism in university because this is a very important part of uh, preparing a new generation of investigative journalists in the Arabic world. Thank you all because you've been here with us. We'll see you later in the opening ceremony.